All right, so let's talk about the tools that you're gonna to use to manipulate bunkers inside of Blender or the OPCD bunker tools. So let's go into Blender. So here's Blender. We've conformed our meshes, so they are three-dimensional shapes now, as you can tell. Um, and these bunkers are pretty flat. Normally, I would do a little bit more terrain digging on these bunkers inside of Unity to conform these and make them a little bit deeper and give them a little bit more depth. Um, however, I wanted to show you guys specifically, uh, and it's a lot easier to show you with them, with, without them being dug out, um, how we can manipulate those inside of Blender. Um, so there was a previous series in the Unity where terrain digging, where you could dig these out by hand using the native Unity tools, or you could use RAM to dig these out. Uh, and that is essentially the main part of the bunker. So if I want to give these some depth in the middle and drop these down into a more of a cup shape, you really need to do that inside of Unity. What I'm talking in here inside of Blender is manipulating the lips or the outside of these. And we can also change what the appearance is going to be from a um, sand and, and pot bunker look. And I'm going to explain that here in a minute. So. In our tools up here, um, we're in our bunker section. And first of all, what you should understand is that you can manipulate all your bunkers at once. So if I hit all and, and I apply any of these settings in here, it's going to apply to all of my bunkers. Uh, or I could always work with just the selected bunker. Since this, well, this might be your second time through and you're doing all your bunkers. But if this is your first time through and you, and you use my recommendations of only doing a couple holes and maybe you have, you know, five bunkers or three bunkers or 10 bunkers or whatever, um, don't spend a lot of time and all these tools in Blender right now making precise changes because these are going to essentially when you go back later on and you complete all your shapes in Inkscape and you bring them into Blender as your entire course, uh, these changes you're making right now are going to be overwritten. OK, so just be aware of that my suggestion is your first time through experiment, change a lot of these settings, bring a bunch of different bunker types and different lip shapes and depths into Unity and have a look and see what they look like and see what you like and see. And because what I'm going to show you right now, it's a lot of artistic liberties. OK, um, in that. Uh, um, you're going to have to make some decisions on what you want your bunkers to look like and what the course is that you're doing, what those bunkers look like. OK, so let's get in. Let's just work on this one bunker for now. We're not going to apply this bunker settings to everything else. And so we have our lip depth here. And just so you guys know, everything in here is in meters. Right. So 0 0.05 meters would be five centimeters. 0.1 here would be 10 centimeters, okay? So 0.02 would be two centimeters. And if I zoom in here a little bit, and I zoom right to, so we can kind of get like a side look at this, I'm gonna show you what these first two settings do. And in order to get a better idea of what that's gonna look like, I'm gonna come up here to this drop down, this overlays drop down, and I'm gonna turn on wireframe. We've done this before, and now we're going to do it again. And when I do that, you can see I get my edges and I see my faces and my vertexes here, and that's going to help us decipher what's happening here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to play with this lip depth. And to do that, I'm going to turn my inner depth to zero, just so you guys can see what's happening here. And I'm going to change this to, let's see, something a little bit bigger, let's say 0.1, so 10 centimeters. And I'm going to apply that. And you can see what happens here is the first ring around my bunker, okay, the bunker lip, lip, <laughs> gets dropped here 10 centimeters. So that makes a pretty deep bunker lip. Um, now, I could do Control Z to reverse that. Um, but to show, let you guys know, if you, if you ever do something here and you make yourself a complete mess of things, so let me just try here, um, and you want to get this bunker back, you can always come back up here, here to conform meshes Go to selected, conform terrain, and it'll reconform whatever shape you're working on back to your terrain. So that's kind of like your reset button. So if you want to experiment here and you want to get back, just go back and conform the selected terrain. Just be careful because if you do all 
and you've got some bunkers that you, you know, were working on, you essentially are going to lose whatever changes you make. All right. So you always want to kind of, when you want to reset, just do this selected. Okay. So let's come back down here. So our lip depth was 60 and we saw that that was this first ring. So let's change that to zero and let's go to inner depth and change that to 0.5, which would be 50 centimeters. And I'm going to apply that one. And you can see that gets applied to the next two sections of the bunker. So that's the inter inner blend or the inner depth of the bunker. So let's combine both of these together. Let's make this one 0.2 and apply those. And you can see what I have here is I've got a 20 centimeter drop now on my uh, uh, lip depth here at the top. And then I have another 50 centimeter drop on these next two. So that makes for a pretty steep bunker. <laughs> so I probably don't want that. I like kind of like point like five centimeters for the top here. And let's try 10 centimeters for this one. Now, shoot, I'm going to have to reset this. So let me go back up to here, conform train, and I'm going to conform selected. Yeah, get this back, change this to 0.1. And now I'm going to apply my depth settings. And I think this look for the course that I'm working on, I think this looks a little bit better because I like this more gradual um, approach here. Um, so that's pretty good. Now that just did one bunker. So let's back up here and let me go to this bunker over here. Zoom in and let's try a couple different settings. And this is where I'm saying you should experiment and do a couple different things here. So I've got that and instead of concave i'm going to do convex now and i'm going to apply that and you can see it's very subtle but now this second loop right here is actually more of a concave it's coming up and if i change this to convex you'll see and i'll hit apply watch right here very subtle it goes down actually it's not okay i think i'm going to have to reset so selected I'm going to reconform that. I'm going to change that to convex. So convex, it's coming up. Let's go concave. There it goes. It went down. Convex. It goes up. So very subtle, but that is there. Okay. Um, let's see. Oh, this bunker's a mess because I was doing something earlier before creating the tutorial. So that's not going to work for what you guys want to see. Uh, let's make, this is a good one here. Let's make a pot bunker out of this guy. And this is where I'm saying, guys, just experiment, do a bunch, the more different things that you can do with these bunkers or anything at this time for the matter, the better keep in mind, because this is going to be, you can overwrite this stuff easier later on when you come back. The key thing is understanding what this is going to look like in unity. So with this one, let's go down and look at this again. Um, so let's change this one. Um, let's do a pot bunker. So let's apply our lip settings here. So I did that one convex, so it's coming up a little bit. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do flatten base. Now what flatten base is gonna do is it's gonna take the lowest por part of our inner bunker, which is probably gonna be one of these spots down here, and it's gonna flatten everything and it's gonna create walls around the outside. So let's see. Now you can see what happened there. It actually still uses our first inner lip depth of 0 0.05, but now our inner depth, which was 10 centimeters before, is essentially completely overwritten now by this new wall that's in there. And you can see that that does pretty much look like a, a pot walled bunker. But what we also want to do is we want to add a special wall around the outside of this that's going to get a special material and some vertex painting. Um, so we do that by adding a pot wall. And you typically wanna do, start with an angle of like 80, and then you're gonna apply that. So let's say add wall. And you can see that I get a new wall added. Now, when I do that, a few things happen. One is um, my blend for this bunker, my wall that I just created, which gets created here, and my bunker mesh, all get changed to the name pot. So I got a pot blend on the outside here. I got pot mesh, which is the uh, the material here, and I got a pot wall. That way, when I go into Unity, we know this is a pot bunker and it gets special treatment as far as the materials go, okay? 
Um, so that's important to understand that what those things happen and that these names get changed. Okay, that's important later on. Now, so I got that one done. Is there another? Let's see here. Oh, let's show you vertex painting. So let's go back to this bunker, which we did manipulate a little bit. Um, oh, maybe I didn't manipulate this one. Oh yeah, I did. I think I did. Let's see. No, oh, let me apply my depth settings here. There we go. And let's back up a little bit so you can see. And let's say we want to do our vertex paint options for this. Let me go to clean and apply. Hmm. That didn't seem to do anything. Well, that's because remember, vertex painting works on what? Channels, okay? If you remember the theory earlier, we work on channels when we do vertex painting. And how do we view channels? We come up here to this drop down and we go to attribute. When we turn that attribute on, what do we do? We got our four channels, our red, blue, green, and black channels. And now we can see these vertex chaining, uh, uh, painting attributes for our entire, all of our meshes. And you can see here with bunkers, our main channel, which is the sandy texture later on in Unity, is going to be blue. And we talked about this. We got this green channel, which is our lip. And we have a red, which is grass, and our black, which blends into whatever the surrounding mesh is. So in this case, this particular bunk bunker, the sand pretty much goes right out to the lip. Now we could come here and we could go hit wet and apply that. And you can see what happens now is this green channel pushes in towards the center. And so now our sand in the middle is pushed into the middle and we've got this green. So the materials that we could put here, we could put more of a wet sand in the middle and a dry sand around the outside to give it a wet bunker look. Um, so that's one option. And I would suggest, okay, that you do a couple of these so you can see what they're going to look like inside of Unity. Um, now let's go to this one, zoom in, and you can see what do I got here. So I do have some Z footing, which so it's kind of hard to see what's happening with this pot wall. So the pot wall, you can see I got this selected now, its vertex painting goes from green to red to green to red um, back and forth to give it that pot wall look. And if I could bring this up, you see, I'll bring this over. There's a picture from Discord. That's essentially one option of a pot wall. So you can see when it gets vert painted and different materials get assigned inside of Unity, this is essentially the look that you can potentially get. Um, but we can also do is change the vert painting for the bunker itself. Let me apply this. Uh, Might have been applied already. Uh, so that we get a pot wall uh, functionality here painted onto it. Okay, and again, this is just something that you're going to have to play with and see what looks differently. So do a, do maybe one with pot wall painting, and another one not without it. Maybe we'll see it better if I do it over in this one. Uh, let's see, pot wall apply. Yeah, there you can see that green gets pushed down to the uh, third loop there versus clean, which it is up a little bit higher. Okay. So that's essentially the different types of vertex painting that you get with your bunkers. So my suggestion would be, I got a lot more bunkers here that I can play with. So anything blue, this is water. So keep in mind that water is also uses that blue channel. Blue is not for water though. Remember, blue is just a vertex color, a vertex channel. So here'd be another one. I might want to do something different with this bunker, this bunker, this bunker. I'm going to play a lot. Don't go crazy with the amount of time you spend like, making details at this point, just bring them into Unity, see what those changes are, and then you can decide where to spend your time and how you want your bunkers to look, and then use the all functionality up here to change all your bunkers at once, okay? Um, that's it with bunkers. On to the next video.